Okay, hello everybody. Uh, this is going to be part five, which is the dimensioning section. The last section that you're going to need to do is we're going to add dimensions. Um, for where I left off last time, I wanted to uh, clarify and just fix something here. Uh, just be clear that um, if you'll notice over here, they trim down all your little center lines to be a little shorter. That's really the correct way to do it. You should trim these things down. It should not go outside of these because these are arcs and these center lines should not affect these arcs. It's only de defined by the circles that are here, full circles. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to trim these down. So we're going to do a break command. I'm going to get these a little smaller. So I'm clicking here. Click there, just so they're a little smaller. And right here, it should not extend out because that's the arc up there, and I don't want to mess with the arc. All right, and right here, the same goes for here. Don't want to mess with the arc. And over here, we'll make this the same kind of length. Just to make it look alike. And then right here, just shorten this up. And that looks quite a bit better now. And if I didn't go all the way over to the outside of that. Okay, so there we go. That looks a lot better now. I just want to clarify and clean that up a little bit. Okay, our next thing we need to do is we need to turn our dimension. Uh, if you notice here, I've got a dimension thing on here. What you do is you right click in the gray area. There's a dimension toolbar. You'll notice it's gone here, but I had it on. You right click, go to AutoCAD, go to dimension, and a toolbar will show up. Now, the toolbar might be floating around like that, and all you need to do is grab it on the top part, slide over here. You can see that it will drop. Well, well, drag it, put it over here, and take it down a little bit, and let it go. There you go. And it should go right back onto that spot there. Oops. Bring that back. There you go. So there is the dimension bar. You really need that dimension bar. It's quick. You can do it from up here, but again, you're pulling down menus and stuff and just wasting time. It's all right here, and you can use it very quickly right here. You got to put this down. Also, we need to change some layers. I believe the instructions are asking us to add a layer, dimension layer. So let's go to Format, do Layer, add a layer, which is Dimension. And again, now here's here's where I need you to correct something too. The color. I kind of mentioned this to some people in class, but I really prefer that the object should always be white. Okay, object should always be white. Dimension should be blue. And I'm going with light blue so you can easily see it. Okay, and I always like the object to stand out. It should be white compared to everything else so you can easily see the object. And that's basically what it is. And now we need to change our layer to the new dimension layer we just created because everything we're going to do from now on is going to be a dimension. So let's go down. Now it tells you to open up your dimension style manager. Uh, I'm going to let you do all these things. I'm not going to mess around with this. This is something you can play around with. It's a personal preference on some of these things, but they're asking you to have certain sizes to match the scale of the drawing. Uh, these type of things can be set and not have to be changed so many times. You can leave it like this, but uh, if you go right up here to dimension, dimension style, you'll have a standard style. You want to modify that. And in here, all those settings are here, like um, like your extension beyond lines. It's in that list. It's got There's some other ones in here. And, primary units, how many precisions, and in this case I believe the precision is only two decimals. And don't forget right here in the angle, I believe if you look further down there's a 22.5 degree angle required. Well, if you have zero, you're not going to see the 0.5, right? So what do we need to do? Put a point, point zero so you can see that it gave you the preview right there. So that's the only two things that are really changed in this. The rest of it you guys can mess around with as far as text height and stuff like that. We'll leave it alone for what I'm doing. Alright, so we're ready to move on with the dimensioning and again it asks you to make sure your O-snap is on which is F3 O-snap on, F3 O-snap off so it's a toggle on and off O-snap which means endpoint, tangent, uh, midpoint, intersection, center those are the things that are O-snaps, object snaps okay um, don't worry about where it's telling you invoke dim linear that's essentially the same command as this one right here if you'll notice it says dim linear right there you see it and that's basically what you're doing so it does it for you by just picking right there in a visual way very quickly and easily so what does it ask you to do let's put that horizontal dimension in first 
Well, all horizontal dimensions are done, horizontal verticals are done with a dim linear. All your aligned, which does it at any angle not horizontal and vertical, this angle will do, this, this um, aligned dimension will do. Then you also have your radius, and you also have your diameter, and then you also have your angular. And you have another one here, neat, that we'll use in a minute called continuation, or dim continue. And you can see it gives you a little example that if you start a dimension and it continues on, and we'll sh I'll show you how that works. Okay, so let's put the one on the top here first. Click that. It asks you for specify first extension line. Now, the first extension line, I already have center lines here. The whole point of doing all these center lines right is you can use the ends of these. There's no point in going down to the center of this because you go to the center of this, your dimension line's right over the top of your centers. You don't want that. You want to keep it here and here. And guess what? You move your mouse this way, it gives you a vertical. Move it this way, it gives you a horizontal. And that's what I want is a horizontal. So I just click right there. It's all left clicking. Okay, and there's your horizontal. All right, and then what else does it ask you to do? Uh, it'll Oh, it asks you to, see it shows you the, the bar. Now it asks you to do the dim aligned. It's asking you to put this two in here. You see the two? So we'll do that. Dim aligned, which is right here. It's asking you to do a two from here to here. Oh, look, it's a two. So we're going to go right there. And then what are we going to do? We're going to use, we need to continue on to go to the center of this piece, don't we? So how are we going to do that? Well, the best thing to do is to use that continue command. Dim continue. And it remembers the last time you had your command up. And from there, now you need to go right to the center of this. And, oh, and it looks like it's got a, a bad dimension and let's go undo and let's go center of circle okay looks like the dimensions not good so I believe there's something wrong with this one so let's get rid of these again and what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is going from here to here perpendicularity sometimes it can give you dimensions that kind of go crooked uh, even though it's two between those it's still not straight so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pick this and I'm gonna invoke a PER to go right to that and now I want to make sure that's in here. Now let's try the dim continue. And let's go to the center of this circle. Aha, that's the problem. So it will not give you a good dimension if you did not have this going from here to here perpendicularity. So now you can see it's perpendicular. And once you do perpendicular, if you continue, it stays perpendicular all the way into your next dimension. So there you go, that, those two are done. So let's move on down. There's your two dimensions there. And then it's got a line that's drawn here. And I believe that line, it tells you where to draw it somewhere in here. I believe it's this one right here. And again, it's the seven, again, seven, eight. That's the center of this circle right there, right? That's the center of this circle, seven comma eight. So we're gonna draw a line from the center of this circle. I'm not gonna use that seven, eight this time. I'm gonna draw this and I'm gonna say at, it was 6.5 long, less than, and what was the angle? 315. 3, 1, 5. Aha, so there it is. Now it's dimension. I want to change it, so I'll go over here to this little little paintbrush looking match properties. I want the center line, and I want this to be a center line. There you go. Now, do I want it to go all the way out this far? Probably not. You could probably break this down and just have it come right to here and break it out so I have this line to go off of. So I'm going to leave it right there so we can use that. Okay, so, or I'll tell you what, I'll leave it there for now. We'll let it stay long. And then we'll just follow these directions some more. Okay, so I've got that line drawn. What else do I have left to do? It asks you to draw this little line right here. Uh, it's not necessary. Don't worry about line two. It's not required. Not in this, uh, not in this drawing that we already have everything done. Okay, so keep on going. Uh, the dim aligned and we've got that now we're gonna do a dim aligned probably gonna have to put a dimension in between this center line and the center line of the slot so we can locate the slot so we do it so we go over here we go dim aligned because it's not horizontal vertical and I'm gonna go from here and do PER to right there and there we go now you notice that it kind of got away from it so let's do that again this time we'll go from this direction to this direction okay so and what I really want to do is draw a line from here, perpendicular, 
to this. And what I'm going to do is trim this line off right there so that I know, and erase this, so I know that this line and this line are exactly at the right position, just like these two were. So your spacing between the dimension lines are going to be the same. They're going to be good. All right, this was a little off, but it was close. That's good enough. But this one will be exactly right. So let's do dim aligned from here, perpendicular to there. Aha, that looks good. All right, and what else do we have left to do? We've got that. There it is right there. It put it in for you. And then what else do we have left to do? It tells you to put in uh, another align dimension for the polygon. So let's do an align dimension. Polygon is going to be from here to PER of here. Aha. It goes right there. And then it tells you to do an angular dimension. So we do an angle from this part to this part. That tells you the orientation of the polygon. There you go. Looks pretty good. And I'm going to pause right here and move on to part six because of my time limitation. So I'll get back to you in a second.